Today our message is from John chapter 4, recognizing the barriers inside us and how the Lord Jesus works from our inside to the outside. That's how the Lord Jesus works. John chapter 4 verse 4, therefore when the Lord Jesus, I need the slides on, Therefore, when the Lord Jesus knew that the Pharisees had heard that Jesus was making and baptizing more disciples than John, although Jesus himself was not baptizing but his disciples were, he left Judea and went away again into Galilee. Uh, this was to avoid trouble from the Jathik Yudev Urumea, was against people coming to Jesus. Have you heard of anything like that in Sri Lanka? You haven't here. Yeah. This is about Jatika Yudev Urumea. Uh, the National Judaist Party was against Jesus, so to avoid any trouble, unnecessary conflict, he decided to go to Galilee. And he had to pass through Samaria. So we will have a look at the map now. I borrowed this from Sohan, who gave an excellent message on this in the morning. The map. Okay. Uh, so you heard of three areas. What were the three areas? Yes. I mentioned three areas now. Now tap your head and say, today is Sunday. My brain has to be brilliant on Sunday. The most important thing for the whole week, for you and for me, is presence in the house of God. So you have to have a brilliant brain. It, it improves when you really tap here. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Uh, so what are the three areas? Yeah. Those who are over 50 out of the competition. Yes. What are the three areas? Yes. Judea, Samaria and those who are over 35 also out of the conflict or contest. Yes. Judea, thank you. Judea, Samaria, Galilee. Now, Samaria was a unique area which seceded, seceded, did a Elam from Judea. Have you heard the, heard the word Elam before? Quite young fellows who, have you heard the word Elam before? You have heard. Just tell him what it is. Yeah. He's wondering what it is. The, the Samaria has done a secession from Judea. And it was the northern kingdom. And the older one, the, 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 the first one was the southern kingdom with the capital in Jerusalem. So there was animus hostility between Judea and Samaria. And Samaria's capital was Shechem. And Shechem was built up. As, 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 as in competition to uh, Jerusalem. It, it's like the competition between Colombo and Jaffna, you know, just to make it, uh, yeah. Uh, so all the time, this older Jerusalem and the Judea region were looking at these upstarts. What are they trying to do? And uh, so when Shechem had its own greatness, uh, the southern people are very angry about it. And later, that area, the northern area got invaded with other powers, different empires invaded and they killed so many people of that area and they also replanted Greeks and Babylonians and Persians so that Samaria became a very mixed race. Nobody could know what their bloodline was. It was a very mixed race. Just like Sri Lanka, uh, about 15 years ago, they took blood samples from all the four major races of Sri Lanka, Sinhalese, Tamils, Muslims and Burgers, and they did uh, blood typing. And they found there are no s genotypes specific to a race. So Singhale, Demale, Marakale and Ole are the same. Will you give a hand clap for that? Or you, you don't like it? Yeah. 
So people have fought for nothing. Uh, scientifically, medically, our blood is so mixed because we have been intermarrying all the time. So this evening service is a little difficult, so I'm trying to make it as entertaining and controversial as possible so that you're all the time listening. But this is truth, okay? So Samaria in time uh, ran down and uh, here we read it. So he came to a city of Samaria called Sika, near the parcel of ground that Jacob gave to his son Joseph. No, so the capital of Samaria was renamed Sika. And Sika meant, Sika meant madness. It was a derogatory term, you know, because the people of Jerusalem wanted to put down Shechem and looked at it and when it was prospering and doing well, they said, the madness, the madness, these fellows are mad, off their top. So the word Sika is a very derogatory term. It's best captured in the singular language, Olmade. Have you heard that word Olmade? You have, yeah. But me, meaning it's a real put down term, isn't it? What are these fellows trying to do? Absurd, you know, that kind of word. In the Hebrew, it was a very derogatory term to a capital city that they did not like. And when Jew map, when the Jews want to go from Jerusalem to Galilee, Galilee was the northernmost, it was a depressed area. And when Jesus got to be known, when people did wanted to insult him, they called him all kinds of names. They called him Carpenter's son. They called him, this fellow is from Galilee. But it was a very depressed area. <coughs> they, they called him Nazarene, because Nazareth was a town with a bad reputation. Then they called him friend of the harlot. Then they called him, he's messing around with wine bibbers. Then they called him, this chap has a demon and he's an agent of Beelzebub. And worst of all, when they got really angry, they said, you're a Samaritan. You know, it's a, it's a, it's, it, they thought that's the ultimate insult to give. So it was a very racist comment, prejudicial comment and very derogatory. They spoke to Jesus also like that, these religious steps of the Jatika Yudev Urumaya. They put, they, they, uh, they, they treated the Lord Jesus also in a very derogatory way. So the Lord Jesus, the, when they want to go to the north, can you see this green one? Can you see a green road there? Can you see a red road there? Can you see a middle road in white? That's the shortest, it takes three days, but you have to go through Samaritan territory. See, Jews don't like to go through Samaritan territory. They would use the green road or the red one, taking seven days, where they didn't, they didn't want to have anything to do with these fellows called the Samaritans. But Jesus, on design, chose to go to the north through, the, through those Samaritan cities, because he wanted to befriend them. He was in a mission, and he knew why he was going that way. So is there any situation in your life that you came across that people put you down? that you remember it, you felt small, you felt slighted, you felt badly treated, you get what I mean? You felt small. And then what rose up in you? Did the Lord Jesus Christ rise up with humility, peace, or did you rise up with a growl? Uh, what, what is the situation that you, you remember still that you were quite badly treated. But this was a situation like that. And Jesus is going to rectify this situation and remove the barriers that human beings had created. Uh, so there are fences, and usually fences have very sharp pointed poles, you remember? So that no one can attempt to jump. If they try to jump, they'll get spiked. Have you seen old time fences with even iron ones or, or timber ones with sharp points? Yeah. Then there are walls. Now I just want to call two of you. Let me call, Roshan, will you come up please? Yes. Roshan, yes. Come, come Roshan, yeah. And Ashan, yeah. 
Now Roshan is meeting Ashan. One is purple like treacle, other one is fair like milk. So you, you were there. You're, you're meeting Ashan. You're meeting Ashan, okay? So uh, how do you feel about him? but how do you feel about him? You have never met face to face. Though you come every Sunday, you, you have seen him perhaps, you have seen him perhaps. So when you have to be face to face, what comes up? Walls, fears, embarrassment, wheels, fences, little, you want to look the best and he wants to look the best and a little facade, a mask. You get what I mean? Not now. But when you are really up for some whatever situation, these are the things will come up. So between Samaria and Jews, it was like that. In a little while, we are going to see how a lady of Samaria came to meet Jesus and how the Lord Jesus is disarming her fence post by fence post. And she took those and jabbed them. But he turned them into a little bridge. So whenever someone comes at you with a pointed pole, what are you going to do? You want to put it down, disarm him and make it a little bridge. Or would you like to turn it around and stab him? No, isn't it? Jesus is in us. So that's the difference when Christ is in us. Thank you. Will you give them a hand clap? Yeah. So this is the situation that I illustrated and, the, and John 4 verse 6, Jacob's well was there. So Jesus being wearied from his journey was sitting there by the well. It was about the sixth hour. In Israel, sixth hour is 12 noon. Any other sixth hour that you remember in the scriptures in the New Testament? Any other sixth hour? Any other sixth hour? Yes, Ruth, just t t tell your dad. He's forgotten it. Any other sixth hour that you remember in scriptures? Yes? Pardon? Didn't hear you. Yeah, Jesus on the cross, isn't it? It's the time that the eclipse set in, everything became dark. And what time did Jesus was, was put up on the cross at what time? 9 a.m. He was put up on the cross at 9 a.m. He hung on the cross for 6 hours. He was put down at 3 p.m. But at 12 noon, the, uh, the, the, the eclipse came. Uh, so this lady came to the well at the 6th hour. Uh, John 4, 7, there came a woman of Samaria to draw water. Jesus said to her, give me a drink. From the safe, there was the well in between. Jesus was seated on this side and the woman was on the other side. And the Lord knew exactly who she was and the Lord knew why she, he was waiting there. Now, if we would have faith when we go to any place, it's like that the Lord has an encounter for us. <coughs> Firstly, remove some of the barriers inside us and then to bless someone else with his presence in us. So let's say together, firstly to remove barriers inside us, then to bless the person with his presence in us. Otherwise, his presence gets, gets under siege or cannot move out because we have our fears, we have our prejudice, we may have a bit of pride and we don't like that person. It's, I, I don't like the atmosphere. I feel uncomfortable. I'm shy. And the presence of Jesus, which is very powerful, can change anyone in no time virtually, as you will presently see, gets bottled up, throttled up in our difficulties, isn't it? in our difficulties because we think so much about how difficult it is for us than how difficult it was for Christ to die on the cross. After all, that's the greatest story ever told. And once he comes into us, the most important thing about our life is 
He is resident in us. Let's say together, most important thing about my life, altogether, most important thing about my life is that Christ lives in me. Christ lives in me. We may be different other things, but the most important thing, most precious thing, that Christ lives in me. And Jesus said, I come and take up my life in you, John 10, 17, and I want to live my life through you. Shall we say, yes, Lord Jesus? Yes, Lord Jesus? Yes, Lord Jesus? We are going to learn from Jesus in, a, in an adverse situation, difficult situation, how the Lord Jesus did this. So this lady came at 12 noon, she had got up so late, not a usual time ladies come for drawing water at the well. How many of you lived in a house that you had to draw water from a well before pipes came around, tap bone water came around? Anyone lived in a house that you had to draw water from a well? And water is usually drawn in the evening after sunset to get ready for the next day. And there used to be big pots, kalagedi, you know, and you collect water in the Kalagedi. This is in the good old days, you know, when there was no tap bone water, yeah. I, I remember a couple of houses in which we lived like that. Uh, so this lady was not of that habit. She gets up at the time she wants to get up and she comes, uh, she comes midday to draw water. Obviously there was no one else at the well. It was only Jesus and her. Anyone else who's getting up midday? Meet me if you are doing that, because it has certain medical consequences, so yes. And she comes to me to the well, for his disciples had gone away into the city to buy food. Therefore the Samaritan woman said to him, Jesus made himself vulnerable and, uh, and, and spoke to her in the area of her ability. She had a bucket, she probably had a rope, because the well was deep and she was equipped to draw water. The Lord Jesus said, please, will you please give me a drink? He knew how the conversation he would be handling, but he appealed to her ability. She had many disabilities. He knew it all, but he appealed to her ability. She put her, she, he put her in a position of power. Did you understand that? He did it on purpose so that from her strength, she would not have fear to be gracious. Because if we are put on the back foot, we will be fearful, we will put up guards and defenses so that we are not violated, we don't look vulnerable, we don't want anybody to know where we are vulnerable. Where we are weakest, we will have a strongest defense. You understand that? Different people's defenses are different. My defense is always knowledge. I will put forward knowledge when I'm embarrassed, when I'm challenged. I put forward knowledge. Uh, what do you put forward when you're in a difficult? Some will put forward a strong silence. Have you heard about telling silence? How many of you have heard telling silence? Silence speaks louder. You're silent. Everybody feels that there is a phantom ass here. He's silent, but he looks like a refrigerator there, ma making everyone feel frozen with his attitude. Have you done that? Freezing everyone with a... Yeah. So we have our different defense mechanisms, agreed? So today we are going to learn from Jesus to recognize our defense mechanisms. More than even the defense mechanism, the vulnerability we are hiding. The, the issue we are trying to cover up with a strong defense, correct? That we need to recognize so that Christ in us may be shown forth all the time. Christ in us, the hope of glory, hope of betterment, and Christ in us, the life for others. That's why we are his ambassadors. Yes, therefore the Samaritan woman said to him, 
Fortunately or providentially, the disciples were not there because they had their own prejudices about Samaria. Once they were going through Samaritan towns and, and they, they did not open up to Jesus, they said, Lord, shall we bring down fire on these rascals? And the Lord said, John and James, you don't know of what spirit you are. So they had their own prejudices about this sector and this, this, this uh, area of people. Uh, said to him, Samaritan woman said to him, it was only Jesus and her, how is it that you, a Jew, ask me for a drink since I am a Samaritan woman? For Jews have no dealings with Samaritans. So she does her resistance, one, two, three. Her retort, based on her religion, based on her race, based on her gender, and she knew exactly what, how Jews had been treating her, treating her kind, and she treated with all the venom she had accumulated from small days, older days, add to it also her personal character, which was rather complicated. All that came at Jesus, but he was not troubled. It didn't pinch him. It didn't stab him. You remember the fences that had those spike poles? He, she took three of them at one go. You, you, Jew, me, me, Samaritan, and went at him. But he completely disturbed her. Uh, he exuded, I believe, his presence. And Jesus answered and said to her, If you knew the gift of God and who it is who says to you, Give me a drink, you would have asked him and he would have given her you living water. He would have said it in a minute, isn't it? Immediately she changes. And she says, sir, one minute before, she was all daggers drawn, angry, reacting from a racial past, religious past, gender past, and her own past. But in that few lines Jesus said, she crumbles, her anger crumbles, her facade crumbles, she is disarmed, and he, she's immediately saying, sir. The Greek is curious. It is used for master, honored one. It is also used for Lord. But probably at this stage, she was still not calling him Lord. She was calling him, you, 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 you know what sir means, you know. He, she spoke with respect. And a lot of her oomph and gas and venom was already gone. She said to him, sir, you have nothing to draw with and the well is deep. Where then do you go, get that living water? This well was not only a source of water, it was a religious well. So Samaritan identity was in this well from with Jacob, the great patriarch. He himself bought this for his favored son, Joseph. So the, the area of Samaria had a blessing in it, but run over with years and centuries of trouble. Did you understand that? This area was bought by Jacob with 100 pieces of silver to give to his favored son, Joseph. So Joseph's descendants, Ephraim, took that area. They lived in that area and made it a very powerful area in competition with Judah and Jerusalem. They were for a long time at loggerheads till Ephraim was wiped out by enemies who invaded, more powerful enemies than they were. But Jesus spoke to her and she's melting and, really, and they came to this well not only for drinking water, it was a religious thing to draw from the well that the ancestor Jacob drew water from. Did you understand that? So they came and they used a lot of water for religious ceremonies because they had to purify themselves. Relig with religion, you have to have your own bucket, you have to have your own rope, Every day you have to do a ritual to feel clean. Every day, morning, noon and night, they have to do a ritual and the ritual needed so much water. So this was a daily thing that they had to do. Religion is like that. 
But when Christ comes, there's a fountain inside you. You're not working for yourself. Christ is working for you. Shall we give a hand clap to Jesus? When Christ comes into us, he's our living water. So Jesus, uh, she starts a little theological debate. You are not greater than our father Jacob. The tone is different, but she carries on with her religious background. Who gave us the well to drink of it himself and his sons and his cattle? Even the cattle were holy because they were drinking from Jacob's well. Uh, do, do you know religions where cattle are holy? You know, isn't it? Yeah. So it, it was a complete system. Jesus answered and said to her, everyone who drinks of this water will thirst again. But whoever drinks of the water that I will give him shall never thirst. No, never thirst again. No, never thirst again. Who so drinketh, Jesus said, shall never, never thirst again. But the water that I will give you, give, will become in him a well of water springing up to eternal life. The woman said to him, Sir, give me this water so I will not be thirsty nor come all the way here to draw. So his spiritual offer, she immediately thought it will give some physical benefit. True, Jesus' spiritual life in us, Jesus' life in us can heal immediately. I remember when I was a fourth year medical student, I had migraine. How many of you had migraine, have had migraine? Nobody? Yeah. Just to help you, it's intelligent people who get migraine. How many of you have had migraine? <laughs> no, that's, that's not really, those days they used to say that. It's not really true, but anyway, I had migraine. And even during my fourth year exam in the medical faculty, it's called third MB part two, I got a terrible migraine. But thank God that didn't prevent me getting my distinction, but I had migraine. Uh, and I used to induce vomiting to, to help this be relieved. And I had to keep the room completely dark and I had two sisters, one of them had to keep pressing on my side, depending on which sides get me great. And uh, I lose about six hours. If I get hungry, I get migraine. If the sun comes from the wrong side, I get migraine. Then uh, uh, he, my wife Hiranti, she started going to a prayer meeting where they were healing. And uh, while I was studying with her one day, she was studying law, I was studying medicine, I got a shoulder ache. And I said, will you pray for it? But I didn't believe in this healing prayer business, though I knew the Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, she said, why don't you pray for yourself? You don't believe in this. So, in fact, I put my hand and said, please help me because this pain is troubling me and I can't study. The thing went off. It just went off. So then I agreed to go for this prayer meeting. It was conducted by a judge of the Supreme Court. So I thought, surely he's a man of worth. So I, 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 did I have a headache that day also? Yes, I had a headache that day also. Uh, I went for the prayer meeting. He put his hand on my head and prayed for me and the migraine went off, immediately went off. Thank God. Uh, so I believed uh, unwillingly, uh, you know, I believed that Jesus can heal. Next morning, I used to wear spectacles. I, have, I had astigmatism, I used to wear spectacles always. And next morning, I woke up and I could see without my spectacles what had happened. Not only was my migraine gone, also my eyesight had been completely normal to this day. Shall we give a hand clap for Jesus? So, he does help spiritually and his spiritual life helps us physically also. Thank God for Jesus. So this lady said, please, Give me this water. I will not have to come here again. But Jesus said, whoever is, the woman said, please give me. He said to her, go call your husband and come here. Which was the so point in her life. Besides all the religious barrier, racial barrier, gender barrier, she had a far greater problem in her life. Her married life or her sexual life or her social life. 
she was really messed up. Jesus said to her, go, go call your husband and come. But you can see after a quite a, he, he had built a bridge into her, isn't it? Before saying this sensitive thing. She's, the woman answered and said, I have no husband. Jesus said to her, you have correctly said I have no husband, for you have had five husbands. That's how messed up her life was. And the one whom you have now, <clears throat> have is not your husband. This you have said truly. No one can speak like that unless Jesus, isn't it? Very embarrassing thing, very sad thing in her life, but he speaks like a doctor speaking about a disease, giving assurance. This is a thing she would not want a stranger to know, isn't it? But he speaks in such a way, she feels as if an expert surgeon is cleaning some wounds, correct? She felt as if the words of Jesus, discernment of Jesus, <clears throat> unveiling her trouble, she found relief. Can you understand this? It was a very awkward thing, humanly speaking, but the very awkward thing, the saddest thing of her life, that, that the don't touch me point of her life, the most sensitive thing of her life, Jesus is moving and touching and healing. Can you understand Jesus? Do you think he can give us a gift like that? While speaking, the most difficult thing that a person is feeling gets dissolved and person says, come into my heart, Lord Jesus. You get how he works? And the difficult thing dissolved away. Go call your husband. Woman answered and said, I have no husband. For you have had five husbands and the sixth one is not yours. Woman said to him, 419, Sir, I perceive that you are a prophet. Now she does a little, another escape thing. I have called it, uh, Jesus spoke truth into the inward part. Jesus, she does resistance. Je Jesus does rescue. She does resistance. Jesus does rescue. So she does another little, uh, another little escape. Woman said to her, Sir, I perceive that you are a prophet. Our fathers worshipped in this mountain. And you people say that in Jerusalem is the place where men ought to worship. They worshipped in a place called Gerizim. Say with me, Gerizim. That's where Moses stood and blessed. It was a holy mountain because Moses par the mountain. Have you heard of par the mountains that are holy? Par the par the? Uh, yeah, this was Moses par the mountain, so holy. And uh, uh, they were contending that this is the place Moses put his feet and it is holy. Uh, so she raised this issue. Then Jesus said, said to her, woman, believe me, an hour is coming when neither in this mountain nor in Jerusalem will you worship the Father. You worship what you do not know. We worship what we know. But an hour is coming and now is when the true worshippers will worship the Father in spirit and in truth. Will the worship team come up please? For such people, the Father seeks to be his worshippers. So whenever we go to any place, a mall or workplace or petrol shed or wherever, believe that Father is seeking someone, that's why you are there. Will you give me a wave on this? When you go to a place, there's someone there the Father is seeking, that's why you are there. That's why you are there. Got it? Because Christ in you needs to get to that person that's why you are in that place. Every day at work, this may happen. There may be someone who is particularly needy in the workplace that day. If we ask, the Lord will tell us, that person is open today, go and speak to that person. You don't have to speak to him, repent or perish, you rascal. You can speak to him an ordinary thing. The Lord will give you a nudge, speak to him about his daughter. Speak to him about this trouble he's facing in the company with his promotion not coming. The Lord will give you a word of knowledge. 
father is seeking worshippers all the time god is spirit those who worship him must worship him in spirit and truth woman said to him then she put it to the future woman said to him i know that messiah is coming who is called christ when that one comes he will declare all things to us she said not today when he comes he will do all things right jesus said to her it i who speak to you am he i who speak to you am he at this point his disciples came and she believed she believed and uh, so the woman left her water pot uh, her holy pot and went into the city and said to the men come so she my suggestion was he was a rich woman she could play around with her life because the moment she went back to the city shiloma you are listening she she was a rich woman socialite so she was playing this life game because she could afford it so when she went back to the city they listened because she is a noted character you understand yes and she said come see a man who told me all the things that i have done this is not christ is it she was th- she told them i think he is christ he told me all what i have done and men in the city knew much of the things she has done and they said we will come with you they went out of the city and were coming to him 36 37 38 39 from that city many of the samaritans believed in him uh, sorry yes believed in him because of the word of the woman who testified he told me all the things i had done so she was didn't look a likely candidate to become a witness for jesus but in a half hour conversation lord turned her heart turned her nature christ came into her uh, she felt i can have a new beginning and many in the city believed so when the samaritans came to jesus they were asking him to stay with them and he stayed there two days that are very unusual that itself was a redeeming act to stay with them for two days no jew will ever sleep in a samaritan's house many more believed because of his word and they were saying to the woman it is no longer because of what you said that we believe for we have heard for ourselves and knew that this one indeed is the savior of the world shall we say thank you shall we rise up to our feet and say lord show me the places i hurt show me the ways in which i react show me my defenses i am willing to lay it down that presence of christ life of christ witness of christ will go out from me thank you lord jesus i want to read the list of odd situations that jesus was in a woman with the issue of blood came to jesus normally they can't come out they are considered unclean but she came crawling from behind she said in her head if i touch his hem she will be healed i'll be healed and she was healed then a syrophenician woman came from phanos a very demon possessed territory her daughter was sick unto death because of a demon possession she came and said please come and heal my daughter jesus said your faith is great daughter your faith is great daughter and your daughter is healed and she got healed lepers came to him all the time he touched them according to the law lepers can't come out of their colony but they came to him and he touched them Zacchaeus a rich man isolated up on a tree Jesus stopped for him woman who was about to be stoned Jesus saved her life then he healed a leper called Simon rich man a pharisee 
and the Pharisee invited him after his healing into his house. But he was a Pharisee, high caste. He treated Jesus like a little poor rabbi. Then a woman from the city came, a sinful woman, into his house. My suggestion is she's used to coming to his house. And fell at his feet, washed his feet with her tears, wiped his feet with her hair, and anointed him with a very costly ointment. Then the Simon the Pharisee squinted eyes, looked at this and said, hmm, if he's a prophet, he would not allow this woman to touch him. She's such an unclean woman. And Jesus knew his thoughts and said, Simon, I came to your house. You did not give me water for my feet, because that's given only to dignitaries. You did not give me a kiss of accepting, because Jesus was not up to the mark in the Pharisee's eye, though Jesus healed him. But this woman has fallen down at my feet. And Jesus said, everywhere the gospel is preached, she will be mentioned. Today, we do the same. Remember that. Let's sing this wonderful song that is being played. This is about the Samaritan woman.
because of your religious background or because what went on in your life you think prevents today jesus has made a bridge for you all those fence posts that surrounded you he has laid it down that you may walk over and cross over shall we say together cross over cross over from your religious past anything else that hinders you and for those of us who have Christ in us already whatever our diffidences that gate us in let those be removed one by one our veils our facades our masks our defenses importance of other things importance of other things priorities that take our time take our energy and we are always on a rushed mode no family prayers no reading of scripture please get back to these things when christ is in us and he speaks to us even our work becomes far more strategic far more rewarding will you say come into my heart lord jesus there is room in my heart for you thank you i will